Hello everyone. Today, uh, we're going to dive into a somewhat nostalgic topic, the Swords and Sandals game series. Since its debut in 2005, this series has caught attention with its simplicity and captivating gameplay. So if you're a fan of good old Flash games, or you're just curious about how this series has evolved over time, then this video is for you. Let's start from the beginning. Swords and Sandals Gladiator is the first game in the Swords and Sandals series, produced by Whiskey Barrel Studios. Its original title was Who Wants to Be a Gladiator? This name was partly inspired by the television show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? But let's start from the beginning. Oliver Joyce, the creator and developer of the game, as well as the author of the sound design, began working on the prototype that eventually became Swords and Sandals around the year 2001. Initially, the concept for the game had a slightly different character. Gladiators were supposed to compete in the arena for prizes. However, when he decided to show the early version of the game to publishers, he changed the title to Swords and Sandals Gladiator. During the development of the game, Oliver designed backgrounds for the arena, and the original logo was a mix of a font in the style of Diablo and a font that he designed himself. The first character he created was a knight, who became the basis for all characters in the game. The ship animation that appears in Swords and Sandals was also designed during this period. An interesting fact is that the name Swords and Sandals was originally used by Oliver in the late 80s for a platform game he was working on in his spare time. Uh, when he noticed that the name was not taken, he decided to use it for his game series. And now for the plot. The game features the main character travelling by ship along with his companions. During a storm, the ship unfortunately hits an iceberg, very original, sinks, and our protagonist ends up on Doom Trek Island, where the Death Arena is located. The arena was established three years earlier by a young man named Hikaos. Our gladiator, through continuous victories, gains fame and wealth, competing with various champions of the arena. The game has three key locations, Armory, Weaponsmith, and the Arena. In Armory and Weaponsmith, we can purchase weapons and armor, while the arena is used to start battles. Additionally, after a few battles, we're compelled to face off against a champion. Once we triumph over him, we get the chance to claim his weapon for ourselves. The combat system in the game is quite simple and turn-based. In Swords and Sandals, Gladiator, the player controls their hero who starts as a small gladiator. The player must gradually develop the skills of their gladiator, gain experience in battle, and purchase new equipment to face increasingly stronger opponents. The player must gradually develop the skills of their gladiator, gain experience in battle, and purchase new equipment to face increasingly stronger opponents. The first aspect of the gameplay is the combat system. It's a simple turn-based system in which the player can choose from several available attacks. These are quick attack, normal attack, power attack, and taunt. Each has its pros and cons. For example, Power Attack can deal the most damage, but has the lowest chance of hitting, while Quick Attack has the highest chance of hitting, but deals the least damage. Next to the attacks, we see a percentage chance of their success. Managing energy, which is needed to perform an attack, is also an important element. When energy is depleted, it can be partially regained through sleep. The second important aspect is developing your gladiator. After each victorious battle, the player gains experience, which allows them to uh, level up and improve their stats. We can increase strength, agility, attack, defense, vitality, charisma, and stamina. Each of these stats affects different aspects of gameplay. For example, increasing strength increases damage dealt to opponents, while increasing charisma lowers prices in stores and increases the amount of money earned, as well as improving the effectiveness of taunt. In conclusion, Swords and Sandals. Gladiator is a game where strategic decisions are key. From managing energy in battles, through developing your gladiator, to purchasing the right equipment, every decision affects your character and their chances of success. Swords and Sandals 2 Emperor's Reign Definitely expands on the formula of its predecessor, adding many new elements and improvements. The game is bigger and better in almost every aspect, offering more choices and strategies for the players. While creating your character, you have access to additional skin colors and even new races for your character. One of the most significant additions in Swords and Sandals 2 Inches is the introduction of magic and ranged weapons. Players can now learn various spells and attack from a distance, adding an entirely new strategic layer to the duels. In Swords and Sandals 2 Emperor's Reign, 
Players start the game without any gear, meaning they have to earn their weapons, armor, and other items from scratch. This adds a bit of a challenge to the initial stages of the game, as players have to decide what to spend their limited resources on. Swords and Sandals 2, Emperor's Reign, also introduces two new shops to the game. The first one, a magic shop, offers players an array of different spells they can purchase and use in combat. Moreover, this shop allows players to enchant their weapons, adding various effects to them, such as poison or ignition. You need magic points to use spells. The second new shop, the church, is a place where players can buy health restoring potions. These potions can be incredibly useful in tough fights, where the player's health can drop rapidly. The church also provides an opportunity to make a donation. To buy the supporting potions, you also need magic points. The game also introduces many new types of weapons, allowing players to further customize their gladiator. Now, ranged weapons like bows and new types of swords and other melee weapons are available. In Swords and Sandals 2, Emperor's Reign, you have the choice of a single duel, fought until first blood, or a tournament, where you must engage in several consecutive fights without dying, with a battle against the champion waiting at the end. Unlike the first part, however, you don't gain his weapon upon victory. Unfortunately, the game introduces some imbalance in the attribute of Charisma. In Swords and Sandals 2, Charisma is incredibly overpowered, as the Scream ability associated with it doesn't consume energy. This means that players can continuously use the Scream without the need for an energy replenishment break. Since we mostly participate in single duels, which, unlike the first part, are fought until first blood, it's enough to almost entirely load points into Charisma, and then spam with the Scream. Overall, the second part is more and better, but despite everything, it resembles a large DLC more than a next full-fledged part, unlike the three part. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before the release of the game with 3 in its title, Swords and Sandals Crusader emerged, blending elements of turn-based strategy and a touch of RPG. Visually, the game maintains the style characteristic of the series, but it doesn't share much with the previous installments in terms of gameplay. As a player, you start your adventure in a castle, having control over a small area of territory. Your task is to expand your kingdom by conquering neighboring regions. Each conquered area brings specific income that you can use to purchase troops and siege machines, essential for attacking your opponent's castles. Uh, moving around the map is typical for this type of game. You move your hero from region to region, strategically expanding your territory. There is also the possibility of stationing a garrison in the conquered region, which provides additional defense. And when a battle takes place, the game takes you to the battlefield. It always starts with a volley of arrows fired by your archers. Then you can choose which of your units should attack and in what mode, balance, defensive or offensive. The hero can use one of his special abilities during the attack, such as a meteor shower. But remember that abilities can be used once or twice per battle, depending on how many power points it consumes. After each battle, the hero receives experience points, and upon reaching a new level, we get skill points that can improve the effectiveness of the hero's abilities, such as increasing the effectiveness of the meteor shower. While factions would have a few unique skills, unavailable to others, most of them are common. During an attack on an opponent's castle, a minigame is also played at the beginning, where you control a catapult. The longer the destruction of defensive walls lasts, the more your army decreases under enemy fire. Swords and Sandals Crusader offers several game modes. There's Campaign, where you perform different tasks on the basic map. One time you have to defeat an enemy army, and another to dig up an artifact. Quick Battle, where you choose the size of the army and factions for a one battle clash, uh, and conquer a standard map and enemies that need to be conquered. Although you're theoretically able to battle against seven opponents at the same time, the game unfortunately often freezes during such attempts. This means that you're typically only able to face off against six opponents, which doesn't pose much of a challenge due to the subpar AI. Moreover, after you've managed to defeat all the enemies, the game doesn't acknowledge your victory. There's no victory message, no fanfare. It just doesn't react. In these instances, the only option you're left with is to exit the game. This lack of response, as well as the other issues, unfortunately takes away from the overall gameplay experience. Finally, there is the survival mode, where you face an increasingly powerful series of armies with your original force, trying to survive through all the battles. 
in my opinion, the game has a significant drawback. The lack of diversity in maps. Your conquests are limited to one map. Moreover, the AI-controlled opponents do not pose much of a challenge. Unfortunately, due to these limitations, the gameplay can become monotonous and tiresome after a while, although the first one to two hours provide a lot of fun. In conclusion, Swords and Sandals Crusader introduces an interesting twist to the series, but it also shows that there's still a lot of room for improvements. Swords and Sandals Thurid, Solar Ultratus, is a title that introduces a host of innovations and expands virtually every aspect of the gameplay. The creators decided to preserve the spirit of the original style of previous entries while making profound changes that enhance the gaming experience. This installment is significantly larger than its predecessors. First off, the character customization options for our Gladiator have been substantially expanded with new parameters for height and width that affect your stats. Now at our disposal are new races and additional parameters affecting our character, like height and width, offering us incomparably more possibilities in creating our hero. The game world itself has also been expanded. Instead of the previous limitation of four stores, now we have as many as nine at our disposal. We can also explore practically the entire city and its surrounding areas. Surprisingly, the game includes unusual weapons for the genre, such as musical instruments. Yes, you heard right, we can defeat an enemy with a guitar. There are also futuristic touches, like pistols and bazookas. Moreover, the game now offers the possibility to store uh, and resell unneeded equipment. This is a handy feature that simplifies managing your belongings, but that's not all. The skill system has undergone a comprehensive overhaul. Now we have the ability to distribute skill points among four schools responsible for different abilities, such as magic and various types of weapons. Changes have also touched the arena. We can choose our opponent, who is divided into difficulty levels. Once we defeat all the opponents at a certain level, new ones appear. The third installment in the series, Swords and Sandals 3, introduces a moral choice system after fights. Players have the option to either finish off their opponent or spare them. Points earned through these moral decisions can be used once per battle to restore some health points. Moreover, our maximum character level is limited to a certain extent. To raise the limit, we need to fight the champion. In this way, the storyline moves forward and we can continue to develop our character. In summary, Swords and Sandals 3, Solo Ultratus, is a real evolution of the series. This installment brings us more possibilities, greater depth and better gameplay quality. It's like jumping from Heroes of Might and Magic 2 to the third part. And now for something completely different, introducing Swords and Sandals 4, Tavern Quests. This is a slightly different direction for the series, bringing in elements of board game style gameplay. In this game, we navigate a game board with the goal of defeating opponents who can be either AI-controlled players or real human players. The gameplay begins in a tavern, where we can choose from several different hero classes. The character creation and combat system are borrowed from Solo Ultratus, each with a unique set of skills and attributes. Choosing your hero is the first step towards victory, and once you've made your choice, you're transported to the game board. Before commencing gameplay, Players can select special cards that modify the gaming experience. Here, your journey unfolds through the roll of a dice, which determines how many spaces you can move. Each space on the board has a specific action that can affect your character or the progression of the game. Some spaces allow you to engage in mini-games, adding an additional layer of interaction and fun. Others may lead to a battle with another player under various conditions, while others might freeze your character for one turn. You'll also find shops on the board where you can purchase new equipment for your hero. It's worth paying attention to what's available, as the right equipment can significantly affect your chances of winning. After completing each board, your character has a chance to level up, providing you with points to distribute among different attributes like charisma or strength. Leveling up is a key strategic element of the game as it allows you to tailor your hero to your playstyle. Additionally, after completing a board, you also have the opportunity to acquire new weapons, armor, and spells. The game ends when one of the players reaches the finish line or becomes the last one on the board. Uh, but even being the first to reach the finish line does not guarantee victory. The winner is the player who has accumulated the most sandals. 
special points awarded for various achievements during the game. Swords and Sandals, number 4. Tavern Quests is a fresh and intriguing game that fits perfectly into the series' atmosphere, all while offering something completely new. Playing it is a blast, uh, whether you're up against the computer or squaring off against your friends. One of the less liked entries in the Swords and Sandals series is Mini Fighters. This version, originally crafted for mobile devices, unfortunately didn't strike the right chord with fans. Mini Fighters was an attempt to scale the series down for smaller screens, a move that left many players feeling shortchanged. Swords and Sandals Mini Fighters centers on fast-paced dynamic skirmishes between pint-sized gladiators. This version is a simplified take on the cherished mechanics from previous games, with a greatly streamlined interface likely designed to accommodate touchscreen mobile devices. The game also adds a new feature, the tavern. Here, players can throw the dice in a betting game, keep track of their top performing gladiator, and delve into the game's lore. However, Mini Fighters doesn't eschew elements familiar to players from previous installments. Our shops continue to offer a traditional assortment of weapons, armor, spells, and potions, and the gameplay is grounded in the well established battle mechanics. In Swords and Sandals, Mini Fighters, an intriguing equipment upgrading mechanic has been added. Each piece of equipment can be upgraded once at the magic shop. Yet, Swords and Sandals Mini Fighters isn't a game that fans of the series will recall with much fondness. Its emphasis on quick, simplistic gameplay may not resonate with those who savoured the more expansive character development and gameplay of the earlier titles. To sum up, Swords and Sandals Mini Fighters is a lightweight mobile iteration of the series which unfortunately doesn't deliver the full experience offered by the core games in the series. It's important to note that it's largely a conversion of the second game, Swords and Sandals 2. Some players might enjoy its simplicity and dynamism, but for many this game represents a step in the wrong direction. Well that wraps it up. We've journeyed through the first six years of the Swords and Sandals series, uh, from 2005 to 2011. These games, albeit simple, have a certain allure that attracted and continues to attract players. But remember, this isn't the end of the story. Uh, the series extends all the way to 2023, so uh, in the next video uh, we'll explore what the following years brought. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.